Hello and welcome to News Round, a recap of stories amid headlines during the week. Coming up, Adrianami vows to fish out killers of soldiers in the Kwama community of Delta State, says troops won't leave creeks until Cooper to court. And two students of Nassau State University die and 23 hospitalized in a stampede of head of distribution of palliatives. And members of the Nigeria Labour Congress pick up the headquarters of the Nigeria Labour Congress in Abuja and demand the immediate resignation of Julius Abure as LP National Chairman. Mr. Abure dismisses action as rascality. Plus, Catherine, Princess of Wales, announces cancer diagnosis, says she is in the early stages of treatment. All right, let's kick off now uh, with the Nigerian army vowing not to rest until those beyond the killing of 17 soldiers in the Kwama community, Delta State, are fished out. To this end, the Nigerian army is soliciting the assistance of the people of the area with information that will lead to the apprehension of the perpetrators and of their weapons. The general officer commanding 6th uh, Division, Nigerian Army for Target, Major General Jamal Abdul Salam, said this when the management of the Niger Delta Development Commission visited him to condole with the Nigerian Army over the incident. On March the 16th, Nigerians woke up to the horrific news of the killing of 17 soldiers which occurred in the Nokuama community, Delta State, where they'd gone to restore peace following a communal clash between border communities. Investigations have been launched into the incident and how the soldiers met their untimely death. Notwithstanding, the army is resolute in its determination to apprehend those involved in the killing. The GOC 6th Division, Major General Jamal Abdul Salam, reiterated the army's stance during a condolence visit by the executive board members of the Niger Delta Development Commission, led by the managing director, Samuel Lubuku, to the military formation. Our mission is to get our weapons that have been by the screeners back and to arrest all those, all those that took part in the gruesome murder of our officers and soldiers. Therefore, we are going to be in the creeks until those objectives are met. For us, the NDDC Managing Director pledges the agency's continued support for the military to sustain peace and development within the Niger Delta as the NDDC extends aid to the families of the slain officers. For us and the people of the Niger Delta, I can assure you that we're in solidarity with the Nigerian Army for keeping the peace in the Niger Delta. And at this point, where you're mourning, we thought we also have to mourn with you. The GLC thanks his visitors for their support and gives assurances that the army will remain firm, decisive, and professional in its operations. No harm will come to anybody. We will continue to conduct our operations in a very professional manner. We are committed to communities to assist us with regarding the location of our weapons and the location of these fleeing criminals. Because if you have information on these issues and give to them, they are also an accessory to the act. A minute silence is held in honor of the slain soldiers. And staying with the killing of the soldiers, the National Assembly is asking the executive to ensure that those responsible are identified, apprehended, and brought to face the full consequences of their actions through a fair and transparent legal process. The federal lawmakers also want the federal government to immediately compensate the families of the slain soldiers. Motions on the issue were discussed separately in the Senate and the House of Representatives at the Tuesday plenary session. The killing of 16 soldiers in Okuama community, Delta State, was uppermost on the agenda for lawmakers who converged on the first plenary for the week. Troops of 181 amphibious battalion. After Senate, reactions trailed a motion of urgent importance raised by Senator Abdulaziz Yeradua. Troops of 181 amphibious battalion, while on a peace mission to Okuama community in Bomadi local government area of Delta State, we are surrounded by some community youths and killed on Thursday 14th, 2024. The unfortunate incident occurred 
when the troops responded to a distress call after the communal crisis between the Oklahoma and Okoloba communities, both in Delta State. What happened in Delta was not an accident. It was a designed and well orchestrated. Those who did that deserve to be condemned. We direct an inquiry, direct the appropriate committees to go into this matter and then give us a full report. Let's know what really happened. This is a very sensitive issue, Mr. President. It is very sensitive and we must handle it in the manner that it will not escalate. After an exhaustive debate, the resolutions are adopted. Urge the federal government to ensure that those responsible for this heinous crime are identified, apprehended, and brought to face the full rot of the law through a fair and transparent legal process. Those in support of prayer to say aye, those against say nay, the eyes have it. It's a very sad development. I think the Senate awaits the outcome of the investigations. So I'll urge the, the committees on defense, committee on army, committee on navy, and the committee on uh, air force combined to liaise with the military to find out, to obtain for uh, first hand for us the outcome of the investigation. The President of the Senate believes those culpable for the barbaric killings could be from external forces and should be declared terrorists. We agreed here that uh, we should await the outcome of the investigation by the joint uh, uh, teams of the military, particularly the defense headquarters on the killing of the soldiers in Okoma. And I, I said that, uh, that at the end of the investigation, that they may even be mercenaries, there may be people that were sponsored who may not even be from Niger Delta, and they could also be from Niger Delta. But whoever they are, the act is not only barbaric, it is horrific and a crime against humanity, and all those involved must be brought to book. A minute of silence is observed, which is replicated in the House of Representatives. There are more concerns and warnings at the House as lawmakers warn of the risk of a demoralized military. The House is worried that unless this act is checked and stopped, acts like this by the very people the Nigerian Armed Forces are meant to protect have a potential of demoralizing the military and affecting the war on insecurity and insurgency, which has so far recorded some huge successes. Backing the upper chamber, the lawmakers pass a bill for an act to amend the 2023 Supplementary Appropriation Act to extend the implementation year from 31st March 2024 to 30th of June 2024. Given the exigency of the bill, the lawmakers dissolve into a closed-door session, after which the bill skills third reading. From the National Assembly, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. And out to River State, where the political face-off between the governor and the State House of Assembly continues to take different forms. The lawmakers have for the second time of ridden Governor Sim Fubara's ascent and enacted the River State House of Assembly Service Commission Amendment Law. During Friday's sitting, the Assembly members observed that more than the constitutionally required 30 days had elapsed since they sent the notice of the amendment uh, for the Governor for his assent. It's all smiles at the River State House of Assembly in Port Harcourt as members exchange pleasantries. They are here for an unscheduled seating. Soon the Speaker walks in and the business of the day begins. The Majority Leader, Honorable Major Jack, informs the House that an amendment to the River State House of Assembly Service Commission Law of 1999, which was passed into law and sent to the Governor on February the 19th, was yet to be attended to. Where a bill is presented to the Governor for assent, he shall, within 30 days thereof, signify that he assents or that he withholds assent. Having given this letter to the Governor, Today, I'm bringing to the notice of this house that that 30 days have elapsed. This petition is committed to the House Committee. 
The Speaker promptly calls for a debate, and some members of the House argue that Section 100 of the Constitution empowers them to override the Governor if need be. I urge my colleagues, because the way all of us are here this morning, we are saying the same thing, and I strongly believe that we will move to the next level. So I want to move that we close the debate and move to the next level. I so move, Mr. Speaker. At the end of debate and voting, the Speaker brings down the gavel, overriding the Governor and enacting the River State House of Assembly Service Commission Amendment Law. A bill to repeal the River State House of Assembly Service Commission Amendment Law Number 3 of 2006 to further amend the River State House of Assembly Service Commission Law Number 4 of 1999 and for other and for other matters connected thereto is hereby passed and the assent of the governor no longer required for it to be law in River State. This action by the lawmakers is a repeat of what transpired in January when they overrode the governor's veto of four laws. With these new amendments, the House of Assembly now assumes the powers to appoint chairman and members of the Assembly Service Commission. The new amendment further places the clerk on par with the head of service and the deputy clerk and secretary of the Assembly Service Commission at par with permanent secretaries in the state civil service. Charles Upper Room, Channel Television News. And to other matters now, the two students of the Nassau State University Kefi have died and 23 others hospitalized during a stampede ahead of distribution of some palliatives in the institution. According to the head of information at the institution, Mr. Abraham Habu, the school had received palliative items from the state government to be distributed to the students to cushion the effect of the economic hardship. Meanwhile, Governor Abdullahi Sule has ordered an investigation into the incident the State Commissioner for Humanitarian Affairs says came as a shock. Monday, March 18, Governor Abdullah Isule launched the distribution of palliatives to students of tertiary institutions. We are going to go around the state and ensure that every tertiary institution, we are able to give you food items to support you. Bags of rice and cash were given to selected students including students living with disability. Over 10,000 students from the six tertiary institutions across the state received their palliatives without hitches recorded. Great Nigerian students! However, the exercise in Nasarawa State University, Kefi, did not go as planned as students broke the gate of the convocation arena at the slated venue of the distribution. The resultant stampede led to the death of two students and 23 persons were injured. Around 5 a.m. there was a suspicion of some uh, uproar from students. I guess who will get what? Uh, our security, two security officers have mobilized the Nigerian military to give assistance. But the number of students was overwhelming, over 2,000 of them. They did not get into the are arena uh, through the normal process. Some of them were climbing up. So once you climb up, others are already done before you. They step on others. So the two casualties we had who died, died as a result of stampede. Others related issues, like 23 of them are as suspect. They cut it away with everything. The Nasarawa state government has begun investigation into the cause of the incident. His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, um, called the school management, and then we had a meeting with them to actually get first-hand information of what actually happened uh, in the school premise, and um, so that we can be informed exactly what transpired and what informed that decision of the student. While sympathizing with the family of those that lost their lives, the state government is promising to continue with the distribution of the palliatives to cushion the impact of the high cost of living. Halima Agayam, Channel Television News. And when Israel returns, Princess of Wales diagnosed with cancer and undergoing chemotherapy. Details soon. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. While the crisis rocking the Labour Party appears to have taken a new twist, with the members of the Nigeria Labour Congress demanding the resignation of the national chairman of the party, Mr. Julian Sabure. Members of the union stormed the national secretariat of the party in Abuja to protest against the leadership of the party and demand the cancellation of the proposed national convention of the party scheduled for the end of March 2024. Members of the Nigeria Labour Congress get up for another dispute. From the Labour House, the workers drive in a convoy to the National Secretariat of the Labour Party. They are not here to show any solidarity. Rather, they have a bone to chew with the party leadership. The premises is under lock and key. However, the undeterred workers force their way into the premises. There have been court judgments declaring that Labor, this Labour Party belongs to NLC. There have been interventions by INEC, you know, where an agreement was written, and certain things were stipulated. In clear terms, what should be done to organize a, a convention? And Abure was given a timeline to do all those things. As we speak, Abure has refused to inaugurate the, what we call the, the, the BOT of Labour Party, which was part of an agreement initiated by, by um, um, INEC, following a court judgment. Now, there's been a, let me tell you, the political commission has invited Abure within the past three weeks, twice, and he found excuses not to come. Beyond the contentious issue of a national convention, the protesters demand the resignation of Mr. Julius Abure as the national chairman of the Labour Party. We are asking Abure to go. We are fed up with him. We want to know who are the people backing him. You can see, we came here. Police came. What is their business? Are we, are we talks? We are wearing the insignia of labor, organized labor. And then you now came, you stood at the gate, you are protecting him. So these are the issues. The labor union is also calling for the formation of a caretaker transition committee to organize an all-inclusive national convention for the party. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Labour Party, Mr. Julius Aburia, has described the demand for his resignation as a show of rascality and undermining law. At a media briefing of the National Executive Council, the party in Asaba, the Delta State Capital, Mr. Aburia berated the actions of the NLC, maintaining that it is politically motivated, coming ahead of the party's national convention. What we saw in the Labour Party was a show of rascality, an abuse of office, an abuse of the law of the land. The Nigeria Labour Congress is a subject of law. Nigeria Labour Congress, under the leadership of Joe Ajero, is not above the law. And the law, the law precludes Joe Ajero and the leadership of the NLC to do what they did today to the office of the Labour Party. Where they besieged the office, broke the office, destroy the faces of the office, destroy the gate of the office, unlawfully took possession of the secretariat and destroyed properties worth billions of naira and properties of the party stolen away, including money slaves for salaries and several other things were stolen from the office. And I think that this is unfortunate, this is unrealistic, this is becoming all becoming of the Nigerian Labour Party. I, the laws are very clear that you cannot picket an organization that do not have your workers. We are not the employers of Nigeria Labour Congress, and therefore they have no legitimacy to have come to picket our office. Their staff is not in our office. We have no trade union dispute with the Nigeria Labour Congress. There was no notice whatsoever issued to us that we had a trade dispute with the Nigeria Labour Congress. This is clearly an abuse of the office. It's clearly an abuse of the law. I must also say clearly that over the past few years, the Nigeria Labour Congress have been claiming to be the owners of the Labour Party. I must say clearly that the NLC, I repeat, the NLC is not the owner of 
the Labour Party. And to legal matters now, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mr. Namdi Kano, has protested his continued detention in the facility of the Department of State Service. He's also alleging that the charges brought against him by the federal government are politically motivated, saying that peace will be restored in the southeast in two minutes if he is released from the DSS custody. Mr. Kalu's outburst followed the denial of his bail application by Justice Binta Kai Yaka. <laughs> The leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mr. Nnamdi Kano, is back in court for the continuation of his trial over alleged treasonable felony. The trial judge, Justice Bin Sanyako, arrives and declines his bail application, which was filed on February 16, 2024. However, the court ordered an accelerated hearing in the matter. <laughs> Counsel to Kano, Mr. Aloy Ejimako, subsequently requested that his clients be transferred to Koji Correctional Center, another facility of the Department of State Services. <laughs> Mr. Unamdi Kano also requested to address the court, a request that was granted. He tells the court that it is unfair that his lawyers are treated poorly by the DSS. He adds that he is suffering from cognitive heart disease as he removed his clothes to show the court the evidence of his ill health. He alleges that the DSS are patching him up so he doesn't die in their custody, pleading with the court to send him to Koje Correctional Center, or in the alternative, he should be placed under house arrest. However, Justice Nyako turns down his request, stating that suspects have escaped from Koji Correctional Center. Immediately the proceedings ended, Mr. Kano speak on some of the issues. We are here to fight for, our people, for freedom, for justice, equity and fairness. That's what we are fighting for. Nothing more, nothing less. And we cannot be cowed by anybody. We are without fear before our enemies. And we speak the truth, always. I want all the journalists here arrayed to go and ask them, ask government of Nigeria, what happened to treasonable felony? Where are those charges today? On 25th. They have just disappeared because they have no evidence against me. His counsel also speak on the denial of his bail. So we are not stalling. It is the federal government that is stalling. We can't take notes. So what is the essence of it? We cannot prepare him adequately. We cannot talk with him. We whisper. We put our lips to his ear. We talk sort of voice, and so on and so forth. So this is the essence. This is what happened in court today, where justice was torn upside down when our two applications that go to fair hearing were refused. But we are going to bounce back. I'm calling on President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu not to allow the moment to pass him by that what the president should do is to invoke the powers given to him and the attorney general in particular under section 174 C1C of the constitution to discontinue this criminal, these uh, 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 charges. The court adjourned the case to April 17 for the commencement of trial. Emanuela Ekele, Channels Television News. And finally, on news round, Catherine, Princess of Wales, has announced that she has been diagnosed with cancer as in early stages of chemotherapy, asking for time, space and privacy as she completes her treatment. Kate, as she's widely known, said the discovery of cancer after successful abdominal surgery in January was a huge shock, but sends a positive message that she's well and getting stronger every day. In a video statement, the 42-year-old princess did not disclose the exact nature of the cancer, but described the last few months since she went into hospital as incredibly tough for her, for her and her family. And that's News Round for the week. Thank you for watching. I'm Laddie Worley. Bye-bye.